This is the plaintiff, Nakia Gonzalez. She says she and the defendant started a head wrap business, and the defendant stole the equipment she purchased. That's right, she has her fabric cutter, thread, and the defendant refuses to pay for them. She has no other choice but to sue her in this court for the $271.95 that's rightfully hers. This is the defendant, Garcia. She said the plaintiff flaked out on the business they were supposed to run together, and she had to pay other people to do the work the plaintiff was supposed to do. The girl even resorted to threatening her life. She just wants to be done with her and feels she owes her nothing. She's accused of busting up a business. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $500 for emotional distress. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant stole her equipment from her head wrap business, fabric cutter and all. The defendant says the plaintiff flaked out and she had to pick up the pieces. It's the case of how to get ahead. All right, Ms. Gonzalez, how do you and Ms. Garcia know each other? Um, we met at the Future Now program at Bronx Community College. All right, so how long have you, were you friends? I take it you were friends before um, now. Briefly, yes. Yeah, how long had you known each other? How many years? Months. Months. Yeah, months. We were, and we you were decided in to program. go into business together. And what about the things you'd learned in months made you think that it would be a good idea to go into business together? Uh, I just thought she was reliable, responsible, respectful, honest. So I decided. And how were you disappointed? Uh, she to you? just didn't hold up her end of the bargain. Meaning? We were supposed to own the business together, her being the co owner, and she was supposed to do things like pay for things, show up cut fabric. All right, now what was the business? What is, what is the business? Uh, we make hand wraps, head wraps, sorry. Head wraps, right. all right. And when you say she didn't show up, what do you mean? Um, there was multiple times where she was supposed to come to my house to actually work. Physically work, like Physically cut, work, cut yes. the and wraps. She okay. never did, and she came about four times. The three times she did came, she brought her Four times kids. or three times? Three. No, she came four times, but three out of the four times she brought her kids, and the fourth time she came, she... Worked a little bit, but she was mostly on the phone with her baby daddy, so. Okay. Um, wh what exactly did you think was your end of the deal here? Like, what was supposed to happen? I was supposed to go to her house, put up money also, held by the fabric and some of the equipment that we used. Okay, but for, until when? In perpetuity? Until you were 100 years old? Like, exactly what was the business plan between you two? Um, was there anything in writing? Was there any expectation? There was nothing in How writing. many hours a week each person would put into it? Or? No. Nothing. Who are the, the folks with you here today? Um, this is my mom, my witness, and this is my girlfriend. She's also a witness. Uh, to what? What are they witnesses to? Well, when she came banging on our door, my mom was actually in the house, and the other time that she was harassing me, calling me, texting me, she was there. All right, so I take it that's on your counterclaim for emotional distress. Yes. Because what happens? You get told you're out of the business. Um, as she said, I wasn't able to make it a few times due to so my So you children. kind of acknowledge that you weren't going to be part of the business anymore. Yeah. And all you're asking for is to get reimbursed what you put in. Yes. All right, now, according to you, what did you put into this headdress, head wrap, uh, what did you call it? Head wrap business. Uh, yes, um, I bought the tag gun, um, the fabric cutter, the domain for the website and the first month of the website payment and as well as 120 in cash for fabric and thread, I believe okay. is what. Now, I'm gonna need you to prove up the expenses that you are suing for. What you got? Okay. Um, these are, this is my credit card, credit card transactions. I highlighted the amounts. Let's see. And I also have the purchase from Amazon of the tag gun and Okay, the hold on, hold on. Um, so the two purchases, I see here the tag gun and the fabric cutter. Squarespace. And what's Squarespace? That's the website. Squarespace is the website? Yeah, where we build that website on. Okay, so I see the $20 and the 46 Do you have any proof? You don't dispute any of that, do you? No. So if you wanted to, if you decide that you don't want, no longer want to be business partners, why wouldn't you reimburse her for this and get rid of her? Uh, the way she went about it, we never spoke about 
her getting her stuff back, she just hit me up one day and told me I want my stuff back, basically, or else. And I have messages and voice notes oh, of everything. But, but why doesn't that sound fair to you? It does. It does sound fair, but well, then she's why? So what did you me. offer her? I offered her for her to calm down, and then I'll get for her stuff. But I'm, I, she was threatening me, so I, I said that I could give it to the police station, or you could find another way to get it. But you're not going to come to my house and get it. Okay, and why wasn't that fair? What were you trying to do? Give her back the gun and the yes, which I yeah, still have at no, my house because you've used it, and you know you're you're using it in your business, and she didn't get the benefit of any of it because she didn't get a single penny of profit, right? right yes. So that's not fair. You need to buy that offer, and also that didn't include the domain and the first month of the domain fee. What about this fabric and thread? Did she give you one hundred and twenty dollars for no, fabric and thread? Never. And do you have any proof that you did? I also have this conversation between us. Okay. Um. So, did she put up fabric and thread? No. You she sure? bought everything else, yes. What about fabric and thread? Absolutely not. I have messages showing that I bought everything. I put 1500 up, she only put the little bit up. Um, and I still have the stuff that she bought in the house. What am I looking at? Um, in, in the middle of the page, Instant I... Messenger? What am I looking at? What? That's Facebook Messenger, Facebook yes. Messenger. So, the first thing I'm looking at is her to you? Yes, I believe and the first And she says three. that's 200 for threads. Right. But she never paid it. She no, never gave yeah, it to me. It's in the middle where I say, so 120 today, right? And she says yes, confirming that that was the date that Where's I Where's that? Okay, so you, she says, so 120 today, though, right? Yes. And you say yes. And then I have a lot of messages of her saying, I'm on my way right now. And then it turns out she's not on her way. She never gave me cash. She said she was going to give it to me today, the same way she said I'm going to come today. When did you guys, today. like, break up your business plan? Um... Late because August. after this, there's four times when she's there. I'm having a hard time believing she didn't give you that 120 in any of those four times she's there. No. And she still owed you the 120 because you're making it sound like it's part of, hey, you know, this is what you have to bring to the table. Then why wouldn't there be texts from you throughout the time from this day to the fourth day that she's there where you're texting her? Hey, you still owe me the 120. There's if she still of, owed it. She just didn't do what she had to do. She never yeah, gave me 120. That's cash. why you kicked her out of the business. But right. what you don't get to do is cheat. So what I'm asking you now is something very specific. She says she gave 120 for fabric and thread. She is showing me messages that seem to indicate that that's exactly what you were demanding. Okay? okay? Yes. And if you were demanding it and your position is, but she didn't pay it, judge then I would expect to see where you're saying to her, hey, where's the 120? Okay. Do you have that? No. Then I'm kind of not believing you on okay. whether she gave you the 120. Now, you're suing her for $500 for emotional distress. Tell me about that. She was asking for her stuff. She was asking for money, and her and her boyfriend was making threats. She actually did show up to my house two or three times. Um, we have an order, uh, order protection against her. Um, the cops found her in front of my door. She was banging. I have pictures here that she damaged the door. Um, at the time, it was just me, my mom, and my girlfriend in the house. My mom was one month pregnant at the time, and we go to the same college, so I was pretty scared to see her around, not knowing what she'll do. But I, I, you, you have a funny way of reacting to a perceived threat. It's so easy. If you just paid back what you owe for, because, you know, if, you, if you're saying, I'm kicking her out because she's not doing her part, so we're dissolving our partnership, then there's certain monies owed, right. and you're just kind of like, and you're I never keeping said, that. You're keeping the profits, and you're keeping that. I never said so I this wasn't. is how this starts to escalate. I never said I wasn't going to give her, well, really? her stuff back. So she can deposit your good intentions. I never said I wasn't going to pay her back. That, what's that mean? Where are the pictures you wanted me to see? Um, this is the damage she did to my door. This is the fabric that she messed up. She would like for the judge to see. This is pretty much how she He's did not going to decide the case. Mm -hmm. so if you want to testify, you have to speak up. What is it you're pointing out there? Fabric she messed um, up? She messed up a fabric. So that was another part of the counterclaim for no, $40. It's the only part of the counterclaim is emotional distress. How is it that she uh, did damage to this door? What damage on the door are you pointing out? Um, right there in the corner, September 2nd, when she called and said that she was coming I'm to sorry, pick her had, stuff up. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Is this door like this, like there's a wall here? Yeah, I'm trying to get perspective. Yeah, so she's pretty much so had something trying to get in. So how is she making damage in that one inch? I'm a, let's put a pin in you a mm -hmm. second and let's ask you, how would she do that damage there? How did well, she do it? Well, first she was kicking on the door, but then we went to the back but room. But the kick wouldn't be there. You no, break your ankle. I, well, you I know that she was kicking on the door because I was holding the door. Then after that, we went to the back room and whatever she was doing at the front, we were just in the back waiting for the police. 
What did the police do when they got there? Was she there when the police got there? Mm -hmm. And what happened? So these litigants knew each other for a couple of months, went into business together. Good idea, bad idea. Bad idea. Why? They only knew each other for a couple months. Why is that bad? Well, it's just because they knew each other for a couple months. You don't know each other. Was it a good idea to go into business with anybody you're your friends with? No, or a family. Why? Because too many, too many things can go wrong and then you, you don't have a leg to stand on. Fair enough, going inside the courtroom. Pretty much she fought with the police. She got arrested. Did you get arrested? Yes, I did. For harassment, yes. And it was dropped down to um, misconduct. We what were you do? How did you manage to get yourself arrested? Um, I guess she had showed the text messages that I had sent her telling her that I was Let's going to Let's see the get text the... messages that are in question here. And, um, Can I, does anybody have them in the actual phone? Yes, you yeah, have it in your phone, yeah. yes. Let me see them there. Okay, so, <clears throat> scrolling down. How's the business doing? Are you still? Yeah, it's doing good, thank you. Good. So, oddly, there's discussion about paying her, and then she says, when are you gonna pay me? And that irritates you. And you say to her, you've been MIA for a minute, so don't rush me. Then you guys smack talk back and forth. Then you say, are you threatening me to her? Um, she says, I'm just saying don't take too long. I know you're busy, but just try your best to sort everything out. Your answer is there's nothing to work out now after having bragged that you're making lots of money. Right. Then you say, I'm not your baby daddy or your kids, and you're not going to tell me what to do. You don't sound too scared. Uh, or tell me what to do or come into my house, that's disrespectful. She calls you, you tell her I'm not picking up. She asks, does that mean you're not gonna pay me? And that's when she leaves this little message. You're not gonna pay me, you need to man the up and say that because I will go to your crib. Are you gonna pay me, yes or no? Choose wisely. All right, then you say, am I supposed to be scared? Then you dare her to threaten you. So there's a restraining that's order in anger. effect right now, correct? Yes, but, yes. Um, after that whole situation with me and Nakia, um, her boyfriend started to text me. He was making threats, but I have text messages here where I say that I was going to pay, and I say that I'm not going to pay in person, or I'm not going to give them their stuff in person. I have messages saying that I'm willing to give the money. She was negotiating but, with Do you understand him. the difference between yes. claiming you're going to give money and giving money? No, yes, There's I a do big know. difference, right? Like, a, like, if I want to buy your head wrap, and I take it, and then I say, well, I never said I wasn't going to pay you, that's not right, right? Right. Okay. Okay. That's like rule number one. I'm ordering the defendant to pay the plaintiff two hundred and seventy-one dollars and ninety-five cents. Yeah. As for the emotional distress zero, you have your restraining order in place. That's my verdict. Thank you. Thank you. So the plaintiff gets what she was seeking here in the people's court. You okay with the judge's verdict? What yeah, are you I'm thinking? Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. I still got the business, so I feel I'm, I'm okay. You are. Yes. And is the business? Are you are you making money? I, absolutely. Two two seventy one. She got that. So it's hers. Actually, I don't feel bad. I feel like she actually does deserve it. So it's no hard feelings. Okay. Very good. Thank well, you. That's a good way to look at it. It's that way. Okay. <laughs> Door is that way. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez. She says she feels like you deserve it. How about that? So why didn't she give it to me well, then? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Do you I, miss being in the business? You think you lost out on something? Um. You know, I missed out on the opportunity to make a profit, but I was just the wrong business partner. Okay. So you don't worry. You're not, you don't miss it. There will be other opportunities in the future. Okay, good luck. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You must sign some documents. Harvey? Doug, you got to know who you're dealing with when you go into business with them because the liabilities can kill you. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.